This is Miss Angie, your children's librarian at your different public library. Today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm in my kitchen today and one of the things I really enjoy doing is baking bread. Okay, I have a very simple recipe that's going to require a little bit of math for us to figure out the ingredients. Now it only has, let's see, four ingredients. And I'm going to share with you the recipe in the uh, description box so you can print it out for yourself. But the only things that it needs, it calls for flour, salt, yeast, and water. Pretty easy, huh? All right, I'm gonna flip the camera around and we're going to, I'm gonna show you all the ingredients. Hold on one second. Okay, this is my recipe here. It's called no knead bread. That word knead, K-N-E-A-D, is what it means when you push the bread and you squeeze it and you punch it down. We're not gonna have to do that in this recipe. This is what our bread's gonna look like. It's gonna be a round loaf. It's gonna be delicious. I've made it many times. And here are the ingredients. So we need three cups of flour. I've got my flour here. We need one and three quarter teaspoons, that TSP means teaspoons of salt. There's my salt. That is where we're gonna to have to have some math. One half teaspoon of active dry yeast, got my yeast, and one and one half cups of room temperature water, and I got that. And a little tip when you're trying to figure out your water, look at it from the side, and you can see I have one and one half cups right here. Okay, so I've already got two cups, and you'll need a bowl. I've got a big bowl here and my spoon. So I've already got two cups of flour. This is my third cup, and I wanted to show you what I did was I scoop it in there, and then I set it down and then I go like this over top of it to make sure it's nice and flat to make sure I get an even cup. All right, so that's my third cup. All right, the next thing I'm gonna put in is the water. I'm gonna save the hardest part for last, which is the salt. So we're gonna put in our water. That was one and one half cups of water. And now I need a half a teaspoon. Let's see if I can get it out. There's my half a teaspoon of yeast. Put that in there. All right. And my salt. I need one and three quarter teaspoons of salt. All right. So here is our math. We need one and three quarter teaspoons. Okay. These are my teaspoons I have, the different ones. This one is one teaspoon. This one is a half. A teaspoon and this one is upside down is a quarter teaspoon we don't have a three-quarter teaspoon so how are we gonna figure that out all right so the one is easy we've got the dark blue one is the one the other one is where it's hard so if I take what I have over here my one half and I add it to my one quarter one half plus one quarter. Now, I don't know, this is old timey math. I, multi, I need the denominators to be the same. I need the denominators to both be four. So I have to multiply my two by two, and I do the same thing in the numerator, two, two. So two fourths is equal to one half. Now I can just add them across. Two plus one is three, four plus four is one. So now I know that this plus this equals three quarters. So if I do one of each one of these for my salt, that's gonna give me one and three quarters teaspoons of salt. So I'm gonna reach in there and I'm gonna add that one. I'll do this at the end because it's a little bit hard to do it now with one hand. All right, and then we're just gonna mix this up. I'm gonna mix this up really, really good. I'm gonna mix it and mix it and mix it. I might even need to get in there with my hands, clean hands, and squish it together. All right, once I'm done mixing that, I'm gonna come back and I'll tell you what to do next. Okay, friends, so this is what your dough looks like once you've 
mixed it all up and you make it into a ball and then you cover it with plastic wrap, cover it nice and tight. You might even wanna take a tea towel. I do this because our house tends to be kind of cold and this needs to stay kind of warm. So I might put a tea towel over top of it and let it sit for 12 to 18 hours. So that's what our instructions say over here. We're gonna cover the bowl with plastic, let it sit on your counter for 12 to 18 hours. And then we're gonna come back tomorrow I'm gonna use a cast iron pot, which is also called a Dutch oven, but you can use any kind of pot that you can bake in your oven at 450 degrees, okay? So we're gonna come back tomorrow and see what has happened to our dough, and then we'll be ready to bake it. All you gotta do is let it sit. Let's see what happens tomorrow.